The theme of today's video is going to be should you sell seconds? As with all things, there's no single right answer, but I believe in this case the answer is for most people, yeah, you probably should. So I'm going to be throwing some gift pieces, just little tumblers and some little flat plates. I'm going to be trying a new Zeem sponge because I found somewhere that sells uh, a few of the types I've never tried. And this is just a, a kind of like a red generic one that comes in a two pack. So they're a bit cheaper. I don't think I'm gonna like it as much, but I'm gonna test that. Um, I did a recent video on the gift tumblers if you want to know more about kind of the logic behind kind of how I throw these, why and what I use them for. Uh, I'll link that. And yeah, so the, there's a, a blog post I did recently and I'll link that as well about seconds and whether or not you should sell them. So firstly, what is a second? A second or a factory second is something that's being sold that's not up to the normal quality of that manufacturer and is sold at a discount. Pottery tends to make quite a few seconds because there are many ways in which a piece can go slightly wrong without it. Uh, it's got an air bubbling. I'm not going to make a second in a video about seconds. Um, so some of the things that can lead to a piece being a second are glaze issues or structural issues that don't impair the functionality. So generally speaking, a second would be something that wasn't perfect but was still functional. And in pottery, that can mean something like a, a hairline crack, an S crack, a drying crack on the base that doesn't come all the way through. So it's watertight, but there's still a little um, imperfection there. Uh, there'll be a lot of things that come under the heading of glaze issues. So things like pinholing or crawling or just generally the glaze not appearing the way it should, crazing. Um, I guess you could have the clay could bloat and blister. Um, all of these sorts of things affect how a piece looks and depending on where they're located they can affect a piece's function or not. Um, something like a blister on the outside of a mug doesn't prevent it from being used but it might not look like a, a first. So we tend to produce quite a few seconds making ceramics. The more variable your ceramics is to so something like wood firing or uh, glazing with glazes that are quite reactive and variable, you're gonna get quite a few pieces where it goes ever so slightly wrong. Um, the higher your standards as far as what constitutes a first, the more pieces won't meet that threshold and so on and so forth. So the question is, what should you do with those pieces and why? When you decide that a piece isn't up to your standards for whatever reason, um, there's a few different things you can do with it. The first would be to designate it a second and sell it as such. And you need to have a way for people to purchase them and ideally a way of explaining the reason for the reduction in price so the person knows exactly what they're buying and that works fine. If you're not going to sell it, you can destroy it, you can give it away, or no, the third option I was going to include in that category was based on how I phrased it for my Instagram poll, which was that you can sell it for full price. I've kind of worded this badly for that being the conclusion, but essentially when you notice a flaw with a piece, you can still sell it at full price is what I was getting at there. Um, because some people feel that the flaws are an inherent part of the piece and that it's fine and you should be paid for your time. And it's, you know, there's a, a definitely a logic to that. Um, the reasons that you might want to sell seconds are financial. So you have paid for all the materials that have gone into that piece, the firing, your time. None of it changes with the fact that the outcome isn't what you're happy with. There's a sunk cost in there and you can recoup some of that cost. 
if you sell it as a second. So there's a good financial reason to sell it rather than destroy it or give it away. There's an environmental justification for selling seconds in that all of the materials and energy that are going to go into a piece have gone into that piece and to just destroy it, um, it wastes those where selling it at a reduced price um, allows someone to have it and use it. Now the problem with that argument really just comes down to where it's going to go and how it's going to get there because once you've made a piece, you can destroy it locally with a hammer with no additional environmental impact and then you can use it in something like building a concrete base where it displaces new material and it's all done locally. Now if you're comparing that to shipping it to the other side of the planet, there's a, an amount more carbon dioxide and material use that is required to do that. So it comes down to how much a piece is going to be used when it arrives and how much additional environmental damage would be done by getting it to its new home, whether or not selling it to there is a net win for the environment or potentially actually not an improvement. So if it's going to someone who would have bought another mug anyway, then Obviously that's a plus because you've prevented a, a different mug from having to be made. Um, but if it's going to someone who's just collecting them and piling them up, I think the case for it being better for the environment becomes slightly harder to argue. But still, yeah, the, there is a certain logic to that. Certainly the fact the materials have been used, you, you are justifying all the work that went into them more by keeping it as a piece than you are destroying it. And then the third good reason to sell seconds is that it makes everything more available. So there are going to be people who can't afford your full price. And there are going to be people who can afford it, but it's enough of a stretch for them that they would prefer to have a second and keep the money. There's an opportunity cost to paying full price for something because you then can't do something with the additional money that you spent on that thing. If you can get seconds, it gives you more disposable income to do something else with. So, customers, you'll, you'll have a wider pool of customers and the customers that you do have get more choice as to whether or not they would prefer a perfect piece or a cheaper piece if you sell seconds. So that is a, a good reason to sell seconds as well. Now, there are some reasons not to sell seconds. The one that most people give is that it weakens your brand or it harms your brand's reputation. And this is the reason that I have given or used to justify to myself um, over the years because it's a very compelling reason. It sounds sensible, you know, if you sell an inferior piece, it goes out into the world. The person who bought it knows it's a second. Anyone looking at it after that point probably won't, unless the person who bought it tells them that it's a second, then you need to either make it clear on the piece or there's a chance that the person will look at it, think it's a, third, a first and think that your standards are lower as a result. That is something that most of us would rather did not happen. <clears throat> and it's very tempting to say that that person thinking less of you as a maker because your pe they've seen a piece by you and it had a flaw. Um, it's, temp like, it's tempting to say that that is or reflection on the brand and will harm the brand's reputation and so therefore you're not going to sell seconds but your brand is the collective opinion that everyone who is aware of you 
holds as an overall based on numerous interactions. So you can't build a brand instantly because people have to engage with you over time. And short of doing something terrible, you're unlikely to lose a brand's reputation in a short space of time as well, because you're the, it's the overall, overall thoughts on everything that you have done prior to that point that everyone who is aware of you is aware of. So it's a lot of points of data in there and one person being unhappy with a mug that they've seen at someone else's house, that doesn't actually affect your brand unless they are a journalist who writes a piece that's widely read um, and even then it would have to be so egregious that people actually cared. It's not likely to happen. So it's not actually harming your brand all that much. Um, may, one person thinking less of you, maybe they tell all of their friends. There's still probably thousands, tens of thousands of people who have encountered you in some capacity who the, that person will not be able to inform in any way and they will carry on thinking exactly the same thing they thought of, of you. So it's not brand reputational damage, but as I said, that sensation of feeling like you're being judged for that reason is not pleasant. And that is a good reason not to do it. For most of us, I suspect, there is a degree of imposter syndrome, or imposter feelings, depending on which term you prefer, um, and the, well, perfectionism, basically. The feeling that the work that you're producing is not as good as you want it to be, and that you are not a legitimate potter in this case, but you're not, you're not qualified to be at the position you're at, and you're just waiting for everyone to realize you're a charlatan, and that you can't be trusted, and that, you know, all of that kind of stuff. You know exactly what I mean, most likely. Um, and I think we all feel that to some degree. I certainly do. Uh, doesn't help that I'm not formally educated in ceramics. I've made this all up as I go along. I don't really know many potters in real life. I'm not as good at making as I want to be. I can see all the flaws in my work. And because I run this as a business, there is a standard at which I'm prepared to send out work that I that that I can see the the things that I could improve on and I can send that out and I don't like doing that and I would like doing that even less if I could see it was a flaw that I would normally reject a piece for and send it out for so there are good emotional reasons not to sell seconds because it will make you feel worse and judged and all those sorts of things and that is a perfectly legitimate reason to not sell seconds. If you feel that the distress that it would cause you to feel those sensations, even if no one is actually judging you, just the thought that someone's judging you, if that is enough to put you off selling seconds, then that is fine. It doesn't have to damage your brand. Having someone send you a mean message on social media or leave a comment on yeah, leave a comment on a forum or tweet about it and if you saw that and it would ruin your day then you know that's perfectly acceptable so i think for me personally that was why i wasn't selling seconds because i was aware that it would bother me more if i thought someone was unfairly criticizing one of my seconds as a first that would bother me more then I would have benefited from the money, in my opinion. So for years, I had been telling myself it was because of the brand reputation. And it was only fairly recently that a few other makers whose work I really respect, um, the main one being Sarah from Not Work Related, who makes amazing pieces. 
and has incredibly high standards for them and sells seconds and people love her seconds and they love the seconds because the first are difficult to get hold of and they're not cheap and a second will be nearly as good as a first because she has immaculately high standards and you can get it cheaper so all her audience is very keen on that her brand has not been harmed by that so why is it that I feel like my brand is going to be harmed by it which is where I came to actually stop and think about it for more than a few minutes and realise that my brand isn't going to be harmed by it um, but it might cause me to be slightly bothered if I thought people were saying mean things about me um, and I still feel like that's a legitimate reason to not sell seconds started making these as a thing to go under my pour overs so it's sort of like um, my strainer rest but without the centre bit and about mug proportions and you just throw them like this and then once you're done with your coffee pour over you can put the coffee pour over on that and it can catch you know all the drips that work their way through the last little bits of um, water left in there but I, I was actually quite pleased with them in terms of just like a little bowl to put keys in or something like that so these are another good gift option and they're very easy to throw 100 grams of clay for these and even that's probably too much but it's awkward to send her any less just wait till they pop off the bats they're very easy to make I asked on Instagram um, on my stories did a poll and did a question box to see what people thought. Um, the, it was something like 45% of people who responded to the poll makers, this is 45% of makers did sell seconds for a discount. Um, and then about 8% of people never sold seconds, destroyed them all. 8% of people said they never sold seconds because they just sell everything for full price. And the remainder gave them to friends and family for free. So that was the breakdown. And then in the um, question box, people had said that the main reasons for selling seconds were the things that were listed. And this is in part informed by the discussion that was had in my stories. By far and away, the main reason for not selling seconds was the um, brand reputation as a reason, which obviously I've already discussed my thoughts on that, but that is why most people don't. Um, and then the customers who responded, either in the, the box or who DM'd me, universally in favour of seconds. There was not a single customer who said they thought less of anyone for selling seconds. Now, that might be because of the nature of the way I asked the question, that it was sort of... I wasn't asking for horror stories, I was asking in a way that I guess made it fairly clear that I wasn't against them. Maybe I could ask the question a different way and get <clears throat> a less positive customer response. But of the people who did respond, they were universally in favor of having the option to sell, uh, to buy seconds. So take that for what it's worth. Um, but my conclusion from it, the answer to the question is, should you sell seconds? It really depends. Um, there are good reasons to sell seconds that are financial, environmental, and in terms of customer access. And there are good reasons to not sell seconds in terms of maintaining standards and um, maintaining mental health. So if you think that selling seconds puts you in a position where you would be uncomfortable, then that is a good reason to not. Um, but if you can tolerate that possibility, then I think all the justification kind of, you really should sell seconds if you can put up with that. Because you'll get some money back, you'll, well, yeah, I mean, for all those reasons. It's just better all round if you can happily sell seconds and not everyone's going to be able to and that is fine um,
So if you're going to sell seconds, the best way to sell them, um, the best way to sell them is probably in person. That's what most people, or a lot of people responding to the question box said they would only sell them in person or at the very least that was how they preferred selling them and it makes sense you get to show the customer exactly what's wrong they're buying it in full knowledge of the floor they get to touch it poke it they're happy with it they buy it everyone wins you sell it online you have to try and inform them sufficiently of the floor um, and that's time consuming and difficult or you don't inform, inform them of the floor and then you have a greater risk of disappointment. <clears throat> um, one option for separating seconds so that they are clearly marked as such when out in the wild is if you get a Dremel you can alter your maker's mark slightly and some people said they do that. It's something I might look into for future sales of seconds but I didn't do it this time around. So my own personal journey with selling seconds is I had one experience where a customer, uh, it's actually a family friend, bought something and I didn't realise but they were buying it from me as a second but they were giving it as a gift to someone who then tagged me in so on social media, posted a picture of the piece and they were happy with it but I could see the flaws that I'd reduced it for in the picture <coughs> and um, I just kind of felt it wasn't worth um, well yeah that that the discomfort of that experience of being tagged in something publicly that I could see was flawed and didn't come with the context of it being a second because it had been a gift and the recipient had not been told that it was a second that put me off for a while and um, it's only recently that I've kind of revisited the idea at all and concluded that actually it does make sense. So um, I am going to do periodic Lucky Dip second sales, which is what I did um, just now with my Christmas sale. Had the shelves were full of pieces that I'd built up over a while that were flawed in a way that didn't affect their function but I wasn't happy with how they looked and then I just did broad categories of things so like a medium-ish sized mug um, or a smallish mug or a giantish mug and you didn't know what you were going to get and I'd knocked a third off the price and then of the profit so this <coughs> was just so I could take the um, the postage part out first so it's approximately a third but not exactly a third because it's the profit once you work out how much postage was paid to me and then how much I spent on postage um, half of the profit went to charity so I raised around 350 pounds and it's going to homelessness and um, food insecurity charities which given that we're having a particularly cold um, snap here at the moment temperatures are dropping down significantly below what they would normally be this time of year and there's a fuel shortage and homeless. it's just a situation in which those two things um, they definitely need more money than they would normally um, and so it's done a few hundred pounds worth of goods yep. through a few hundred pounds worth of good it's also paid for all my failures, including, well, I mean, I haven't actually sat down and worked this out, but I think I've earned, raised enough money with that to pay for all the materials and firing for all the pieces that went wrong, including the ones w that weren't good enough to sell. So I haven't lost money on the failed pieces that I wouldn't otherwise have sold. Um, and there are lots of people who are pleased because they got a piece uh, two thirds the normal price and I'd like to think I set the standard high enough that no one's going to get it and think that they've been ripped off if anything 
I'm hoping there's going to be quite a few people who can't work out what the floor is because there are some things that bug me that I know my family can't spot even when I point them out um, and I won't send a piece out like that but probably could without that many people noticing so overall at this stage at least having not had much customer feedback yet because they only went out earlier in the week um, I am happy with how that second sale went and I will be doing another one definitely next Christmas maybe depending on how quickly I build up enough to make it worthwhile uh, probably one before then <coughs> but yeah overall I feel like my position on seconds has changed in the last few months um, especially when I sat down to write this um, or write the blog post rather uh, I definitely thought about it in a way that I hadn't prior to that um, and I feel the argument for selling seconds is much stronger than the argument against um, so long as you can put up with the discomfort the potential discomfort and if you can't then as i said um that is a perfectly good reason not to do it At the end of the day that's the main thing you are the person responsible for them and if a piece just doesn't meet your standards to the extent that you're not prepared to sell it then that is entirely your decision um and i think <coughs> I've run out of voice and run out of things to say <coughs> so I will end there if you've got any comments, thoughts let me know in the comments um, the, all the things that I mentioned I'll link in the description and I don't like this sponge as much as the porcelain one it's significantly softer one of the things I really like about the Zoom sponges is they, they're almost halfway between a sponge and a rib this is closer to the mud tools kind of consistency <clears throat> but if you like the mud tool sponges you might get on better with these so they're just I think they're called heavy duty sponges the red ones they come in a two pack and they're a bit cheaper than the um, the normal one off ones I think but uh, yeah that's it I hope something here was useful and if I've changed your mind about selling seconds, then please let me know, because I would be very interested to see what everyone's take on it is.